Dear brothers and sisters, like crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forward in the name of Christ. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. 
the Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine. Yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, 
and that every tongue should proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to welcome the Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, the man called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you prepared to give to me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty silver pieces, and from that moment he looked for an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to say, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go to so and so in the city and say to him, The Master says, My time is near. It is at your house that I am keeping Passover with my disciples. The disciples did what Jesus told them and prepared the Passover. When the evening came, he was at table with the twelve disciples, and while they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn, Not I, Lord, surely. He answered, Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to his fate, as the Scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. Judas who was to betray him, asked in his turn, Not I, Rabbi, surely. Jesus answered, They are your own words. Now as they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, He gave it to them, saying, Drink, all of you, of this, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. From now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my Father. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith in me this night, for Scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd and the flock will be scattered. But after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. At this, Peter said, They will all lose faith in you. I will never lose faith. Jesus answered him, I told him solemnly, This very night before the cock crows, 
you will have disowned me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus came with them to a small estate called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Stay here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and sadness came over him and great distress. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake with me. And going on a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, though to be as you, not as I would have it. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you had not the strength to keep awake with me one hour. You should be awake and praying, not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot pass by without my drinking it, your will be done. And he came back again and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy. Leaving them there, he went away again and prayed for the third time, repeating the same words. Then he came back to the disciples and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. Now the hour has come when the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is already close at hand. He was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve, appeared, and with him a large number of men, armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and elders of the people, now the traitor had arranged to sign with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge. So he went straight up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, My friend, do what you are here for. Then they came forward, seized Jesus, and took him in charge. At that, one of the followers of Jesus grasped his sword and drew it. He struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Jesus then said, Put your sword back, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, who would promptly send more than twelve legions of angels to my defence? But then... How would the scriptures be fulfilled that say, This is the way it must be? It was at this time that Jesus said to the crowns, Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I sat teaching in the temple day after day, and you never laid hands on me. Now all this happened to fulfill the prophecies in scripture. Then all the disciples deserted him and ran away. The man who had arrested Jesus led him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter followed him at a distance, and when he reached the high priest's palace, he went in and sat down with the attendants to see what the end would be. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus, however false, on which they might pass the death sentence. But they could not find any, though several lying witnesses came forward. Eventually, two stepped forward and made a statement. This fact said, I have the power to destroy the temple of God and in three days build it up. The high priest then stood up and said to him, have you no answer to that? What is the evidence these men are bringing against you? But Jesus was silent, and the high priest said to him, 
tell you, if you are the Christ, the Son of God? Jesus answered, The words are your own. Moreover, I tell you that from this time onward, you will see the Son of Man seized at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. What need of witnesses have we now? There, you have just heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They answered, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and hit him with their fists. Others said as they struck him, Play the prophet, Christ, who hit you then? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of them all, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This man was Jesus the Nazarene. And again, with an oath, he denied it. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, You are the one of them for sure. Why, your accent gives you away. And he started calling down curses on himself and swearing, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crew, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people met in council to bring about the death of Jesus. They had him bound and led him away to hand him over to Pilate, the governor. When he found that Jesus had been condemned, Judas, his betrayer, was filled with remorse and took the thirty pieces of silver back to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned, I have betrayed innocent blood. They replied, What is that to us? That is your concern. And flinging down the silver pieces in the sanctuary, he made off and went and hanged himself. The chief priests picked up the silver pieces and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury. It is blood money. So they discussed the matter and bought the potter's field with it as a graveyard for foreigners. And this is why the field is called the field of blood today. The words of the prophet Jeremiah were then fulfilled. And they took the thirty silver pieces, the sum at which the precious one was priced by the children of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, just as the Lord directed me. Jesus then was brought before the governor, and the governor put to him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, any one they chose. Now there was at this time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, 
had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What am I to do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified. And Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people to a man shouted back, His blood is on us and on your children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort round him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak, and having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak, and dressed him in his own clothes, and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothes by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So you would destroy the temple and rebuild in three days. Then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He put his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait, see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus, again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, 
the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, In truth, this was the Son of God. And many women were there, watching from a distance, the same women who had followed Jesus from Galilee and looked after him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. When it was evening, there came a rich man of Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate thereupon ordered it to be handed over. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it in his own new term, which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Now Mary of Magdala and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulchre. Next day, that is, when preparation day was over, the chief priests and the Pharisees went in a body to Pilate and said to him, Your Excellency, we recall that this impostor said, while he was still alive, After three days I shall rise again. Therefore, Give the honour to have the sepulchre kept secure until the third day, for fair his disciples come to steal him away and tell the people. He has risen from the dead. This last piece of fraud would be worse than what went before. Pilate said to them, You may have your guards. Go and make all as secure as you know how. So they went and made the sepulchre secure, putting seals on the stone and mounting a guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have just entered into a great retreat which begins on Palm Sunday, comes to a radical height from Holy Thursday until Easter Sunday, and of course ends with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot come to this Holy Week without finding new things and having the gospel speak to me every year in a different way. And I simply want to share with you the two things that the Passion, according to St. Matthew, was given to me this year, very briefly because we've been listening for a long time to the gospel, and I want you to go home and read it yourself so that this gospel will speak to you also. The first happens at the beginning of the Gospel in the Garden of Gethsemane, where just as St. Peter denies his, he knows Jesus three times, so does Jesus fall to his knees and ask something of his Father three times. And each time he simply says, Take this cup from me. But if it is your will that it not be taken, I will accept it. But to put it very simply, three times he falls to his knees and says, I do not want to go any further with this. I do not want to suffer. I do not want to die. And three times the Son of God implores his Father. And three times his Father says no. 
I think there's a lot to learn from that. Because if the Father does not answer every one of Jesus' prayers, why do I insist that he should answer mine? Because my role is to follow Jesus. And that includes following him into the place where life is not as I would want it. And into the place where, in spite of my belief and in spite of my being the Son of the Father, the Father will also deny my prayers. The first thought, we need to rethink what we understand as asking God for things. Finally, the next thing which happens three times, and that's the denial of Peter. The powerful thing is, when he realizes what he's done, he goes out and fries unconsolably. My prayer for myself, not for you, is that I might cry unconsolably for the occasions when I have denied Jesus Christ. Okay, I don't stand at the cathedral and deny him, but we deny him by the way we live, by who we are, by what we are. And I don't believe that there's one person alive on earth today who adequately lives and expresses the reality of their love of Christ. And so Peter cries unconsolably, I pray that I might have the gift this Easter to cry for the ways that I am not the brother, the follower, the servant of Jesus Christ that I should be. And let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we have remembered this morning the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray that it will never pass from our memory and that in this way we may present our prayers to God. For the church all around the world, following the Saviour during Holy Week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted or victimised for their religious beliefs, that their faith will give them the strength to stand firm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for our parish community, that the services of Holy Week will renew and deepen our faith in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear For a spirit of penance, reflection and gratitude during these chosen days. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear that all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our <clears throat> of the gentle repose of the faithful departed, especially Ingrid Bono, Anthony Romia, Chris Dimitulak, Stuart Ward, 
Patricia McNamara, and Ronald Meldrew. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen. 
and let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Looks like I've got some announcements. Um, I think you should take home the bulletin so you'll know exactly when things are during the triduum. If I tell you, I'm sure most of you will forget. What I would say, though, is this great event we're about to celebrate is one event which goes from Holy Thursday night to the Good Friday 3 o'clock um, liturgy and to the Vigil Mass. Those three moments make one liturgy, just as every other Mass is only one liturgy. This one liturgy goes over almost three days, and I recommend that you come. I recommend that you make a part of your prayer. I recommend that you become part of what we celebrate, because who knows, you might meet God. And then there's some other things happening, preparations for reconciliation and that. The meeting is on the 8th of May. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.